Thanks for joining us this week, life under the spy's eyes and why worry about Huawei? Is the relationship between New Zealand and China's technology giant getting too close for comfort? Huawei is a major player in the multi-billion dollar drive to upgrade New Zealand's telecommunications and information technology. It's working with Chorus and other contractors developing the ultra-fast broadband and the rural broadband networks. It's a multi-million dollar customer for New Zealand's communications component developer Raycon. It's providing technology for Vodafone's fixed line network and Huawei built the Two Degrees mobile network. Well, some see it all as a positive symbol of our growing relationship with China, but New Zealand's international security partners, the United States, Australia, Canada and the UK, all seem much more concerned about Huawei's potential to become a Trojan horse for Chinese espionage. Well, now we're going to check out the risks with security analyst and director of 36th Parallel Assessments, Paul Buchanan. Welcome, Paul. Tell me, has that US Senate report actually told us anything new? No, it hasn't, but what's interesting about the report are, are two things. The first one is the unusually blunt tone taken not so much in the report, but by the committee chair in media interviews. This is very undiplomatic talk. It's election time, though. And it is, but the report was bipartisan. The Democrats signed on to it, as well as the Republicans. Okay. So there's no real political advantage to be gained by China bashing. And what was interesting is that the White House and the Romney campaign both stayed very quiet about the report when it opened up an opportunity for them to try to make some political hay. Same time, the U.S. has got a big telecommunications industry of its own and is quite protective <laughs> towards its own interests. Uh, to what degree could that have been a factor in play? Well, it certainly was a factor. I mean, there's, but I think that um, it wasn't as big a factor as many skeptics would like mm. to believe. And the reason for that is what was interesting about the report was that although it talked about national security, it talked about the fact that Huawei in particular was not a good corporate actor, that it engaged in bribery and corruption, it engaged in copyright violations. And engaged Don't U.S. In, companies do that? And, well, that's just it. They believe in the Western market model. And although they sue each other right, left, and center, the belief is that Huawei is not playing by the same rules as their Western competitors, and that's an unfair advantage. That's the interesting part. That was the bulk of the report. And the second reason why it uh, is not necessarily electorally driven is for the first time they produced a classified appendix. Now, you and I will never see that appendix, but one would hope that uh, the New Zealand okay. government and the GCSB would see it. Carl, I was going to ask you, was there any hard evidence published there that Huawei has actually been involved in breaching security, invading privacy, or actively supporting subversive and disruptive activity? No, was there was there any. No, there was not, and that follows on. And has anyone seen anything and anywhere? No, when the Australians banned Huawei, they had no concrete evidence to offer. The Canadians have now just banned Huawei from their critical infrastructure. They have no evidence to offer. But the reason for that is quite simple: the evidence is classified, and none of these governments want to reveal the extent of what they know. Much less, the, much less the means and the sources. So the best we can get to date is this type of unclassified report, and then of course the reports that in the United Kingdom, which was the first to allow Huawei in, in a major way of the, of the five eyes echelon mm -hmm. partners. That's UK, Canada, United States, Australia, New Zealand. And New Zealand, yeah, it's okay. a yeah. signals intelligence yeah, uh, the, the echelon uh, sharing, yeah. right, a sharing yeah, network. Okay. Now, the UK were the first to allow them in, and if all reports are true, Scotland Yard and MI5 then had to do a forensic audit of the Huawei infrastructure, and they claimed that they found many bugs, but they can't be sure that they found every bug. And that, I think, is what opened the door to the other Western partners to say, hold on a second. But they're there, they're still doing business there. Their boss comes and sees the Prime Minister of Britain. Doesn't seem to be too bad. They still seem to be able to transact business in the UK. Uh, they can do business, but they're not doing business with sensitive government agencies. I mean, to put it bluntly to you, haven't we got just as much to, uh, if not more possibly, to worry about? Uh, when Google, Google runs its Street View project in New Zealand and picks up data from people's Wi-Fi computers. Indeed, well... And, and, and even when they're caught, they still didn't destroy all the disks that they had. 
No, and but what we have to do is is separate uh, invasions of privacy of individuals done by private parties. Let's face it, every time you get log on to Facebook, uh, your information is being sent to potential advertisers and the like. However, the charges, if they are true about Huawei, are that they're engaging in corporate espionage as well as security espionage. So there, it's a slightly different thing than okay. Google driving around and stealing people's... Okay, uh, our, our Prime Minister and the Minister of um, Communications, they both say, look, we've, put, we've taken security safeguards. We've put security into this, into this whole equation of the contracts that Huawei is uh, undertaking in New Zealand. Isn't that assurance enough? Well, I, I, I think we have to take it as I an mean, assurance. I mean, you can't get much more than that, can you? And No, you can't. And what is interesting is New Zealand does have one advantage. And the basic way these, these backdoor beacons, as they're called, the so-called bugs, the way they work is if you have a large market and you have miles and miles of cable transmitting, you know, thousands, well, zillions mm -hmm. of bits of data, you can easily place these bugs into the network, but it's very difficult to uh, target specific data pack packets and the like because of the volume of data going mm -hmm. through those cables. However, in a small market like New Zealand, it is easier for the security agencies to locate bugs if they're in the system. And what is was most important, they can get into the system, perhaps as part of the contract, in order to uh, place their own software to monitor any potential beacons coming out of it. So we're lucky that we're small. Well, do you have any reason to doubt the competency of the agency responsible for this kind of activity, the Government Communications Security Bureau? Well, I'd hate to say it, but... <coughs> um, Pardon me? <laughs> up, up until I've said it. Up until, the, up until very recently. I, uh, I believe that they were as competent as any of their echelon partners, which means first-rate professional signal intelligence organization. However, the revelations about the GCSB that have come out in the last few weeks uh, show a level of incompetence uh, and a lack of professionalism that is truly worrisome. Now, perhaps it's not so much their expertise in tapping into signals, that is in question here, but their political common sense, uh, their, their uh, adherence to the rules governing their charter, I think those now are open to question because the dot-com case, which is the gift that keeps on giving, uh, reveals that the GCSB was either acting in a rogue fashion and if we're to believe the prime minister, he knew nothing. That is a bit rogue, since he is the minister of intelligence. Uh, or they were grossly incompetent in checking the bona fides of the individual that they were spying on. What are the implications for New Zealand in continuing its contact with Huawei? As far as we know, with, yes, there's been some security oversight, but not the sort of formal oversight system that, for instance, has been established in the UK. What are the implications in terms of uh, our relationship and our standing within that intelligence community? Well, let's, uh, I'll play devil's advocate and, and, and give a good version and a bad version of what may be occurring. The bad ver version first, uh, we will be sh we'll So you're playing devil and angel, huh? Uh, <laughs> right, go, go. Go. Since I'm not working for them, yeah. I, I can only speculate uh, the, the, again, the two extremes. One extreme would be the, the bad side. We will be cut off from intelligence streams as a result of uh, allowing Huawei into the critical infrastructure of New Zealand. And the reason for that is the partners will not want to jeopardize those intelligence streams due to the lackadaisical attitude of the New Zealand government uh, when it comes to telecommunications security. That's the bad view. The good view may be that the GCSB has already given assurances to the Echelon partner and has proven that it can thwart cyber attacks on the Huawei network. And, uh, and because, again, they're experts, and because we know the people who actually sit at the consoles and the monitors of the eavesdropping stations here in New Zealand are not all New Zealanders. In fact, the majority are from another country. Mm -hmm. And uh, they certainly will be involved 
in any monitoring of uh, Huawei that the GCSB is undertaking. So perhaps the good news is they have given assurances, insurances, uh, assurances that are provable to the Echelon partners, and uh, we really don't have much to worry about. Okay. You said we were in an untenable position at the weekend. You said can't be a preferred trade partner of China and a intimate intelligence partner with the US, UK and the, f the other f four of the five powers. Given a choice, where do you go? Well, it's not for me to say. Uh, I think that we need an... I have an opinion. And, well, you know, I, I don't want to be accused of prejudice because I, uh, I came from the United States and I worked for the U.S. government. I think New, New, Zealand's, New Zealanders need to really think about where their fortunes lie. I would have preferred that we not uh, sign the Wellington and Washington declarations, that we had stayed at a bit of an arm's distance from Washington because I fear that now we are going to get involved in American wars that have nothing to do with us and that we're going to be targeted in the intelligence field precisely because we're frontier partners of the United States. And we ha have to understand that in this day and age, issues of economic import, trade and the like are considered national security issues by all of the big players. And so I have a feeling that we're going to come under the spotlight in spite of our small size, precisely because of that connection with the United States that uh, will undermine our trade relationships, not just with China, but we have trade relationships in the Middle East, we have trade relationships in the Southeast Asia, and if these countries believe that trade secrets could be passed via New Zealand to the Western powers, then there will be a backlash t uh, towards New Zealand as the, the, the culpable party. Sounds like you've got a lot of work ahead of you. <laughs> Paul Buchanan. Buchanan. <laughs> Paul Buchanan, thank you very much. Paul Buchanan, Security Analyst and Director of 36th Parallel Assessments. Next, who is New Zealand's most spied on man? The answer, after the break.